Cloning is the technique which produced Dolly the sheep, who was the first uh, animal to be produced as a clone of another adult. That process is commonly called reproductive cloning. On the other hand, in other areas of research, had we taken the embryo and cultured it in order to obtain embryo stem cells for research or for therapy, that would commonly be known as therapeutic cloning. When you consider using the cloning technique in humans, there are many ethical implications that arise. You could use the technique to produce a child in reproductive cloning, when you have to consider the implications for that child. What would it be like to be a genetically identical twin of somebody else, perhaps close to the, the clone child? My own view is that the psychological implications for that child would be intolerable because we would all expect the clone to be like the original. In principle, is that you can create copies of existing persons. And I'm very much against that. The Islamic perspective about cloning is that it will not accept reproductive cloning, but it certainly will promote uh, therapeutic cloning because there is an enormous amount of benefit that can accrue from this technology. All the cells that you produce from the embryonic stem cells, they could be identical to the patient who will receive the cells. And then you would avoid rejection. But it presents problems because you require donated eggs for every single embryo you create. If you look at the vast number of patients you may be talking about, this would lead to demands of donation of human eggs on a scale beyond anything uh, which would be normally acceptable for a, a fairly invasive treatment which can be painful and is not completely risk-free. It seems that this method will be very costly and it will be very difficult if you think of it as used to treat specific diseases. So uh, there could be other alternatives that need to be explored. For example, if you have a stem cell bank or stem cell repository, you could, you could use uh, that as a starting point instead. Now, the important thing would be, of course, where the eggs for this purpose is derived from. And if you can get the eggs from a woman, who has willingly donated this and has consented for research to be done on these eggs, it's not a problem. Islam will readily recognize that. I think that there are both physiological and psychological implications for women who are being invited to donate. The hormone treatment necessary to induce egg ovulations does have unpleasant side effects. Although they would be very small, there must also be a, re uh, a risk of a reduction in potential fertility subsequent to the treatment. And in this regard, we have suggested that women should only be allowed to donate after they've had children. I think it's difficult to imagine how women would feel if they're donating an egg, which is then used to produce an embryo, because it's really a step towards producing an embryo. And it's very important that the, the people concerned, because I think that the partner uh, should also be included in these discussions, that they accept that an embryo is being produced that might have the ability to become a child, but which is not going to be allowed to be, uh, become a child because the cells are going to be used for research. And for some people, that would be uh, something that they, I think, could not contemplate. But we are confident from the correspondence that we've had that there are some women for whom this would be an important thing for them to do. Over time, therapeutic cloning can contribute to research into a great range of inherited diseases. And I think in the main, women come forward because they've seen the suffering that can occur after someone has developed one of these conditions and believe that they can contribute, perhaps not to the treatment of that person, because the research will take too long for that to be possible, but to, to the treatment of other people in the future who will develop these diseases.